Good morning and a very warm welcome to our Sunday gathering here at Burnham-on-Sea Baptist Church. My name is Rob, I am the minister here and I pray this morning will be a blessing to you as we bless God with our worship, praise and prayer. And I pray that you have come expectant this morning, expectant to meet with God as we study his word together a little bit later on. And you join us this morning as we start our build up, our run in to Easter in a few weeks time. So we have just completed our Bible series experience a better story and this morning we start a new mini-series uh, called On The Way. A little bit more about that later on. Now then, I must take this opportunity this morning to wish everyone a happy Mother's Day. I really do hope that hasn't come as a surprise to you, but today is Mother's Day. So happy Mother's Day, Mum. Hopefully we'll catch up a little bit later on Zoom. And so today is a day that we recognise and give thanks uh, for the kindness, the sacrifice and love of all mothers. There is something so special about the love of a mother for their child. The sacrifices they make for their children. The care and love that they show. And yet even still, we know of a greater love. The love of Jesus. So how can we bless all the mothers out there this morning and recognize their love and the love of Jesus. If only we knew a song with actions all about love. Come on now, let's open up the book.
Well, let's continue our time of sung worship this morning. And I want to encourage us all with a psalm, with Psalm 145. I will exalt you, my God and King, and praise your name for ever and ever. I will praise you every day. Yes, I will praise you forever. Great is the Lord. He is most worthy of praise. No one can measure his greatness. Let each generation tell its children of your mighty acts. Let them proclaim your power. I will meditate on your majestic, glorious splendor and your wonderful miracles. Your awe-inspiring deeds will be on every tongue. I will proclaim your greatness. I will praise the Lord and may everyone on earth bless his holy name forever and ever. Let's sing. You were the word at the beginning, one with God the Lord most high. Your hidden glory in creation Yours is the king. 
as we enter prayer now, we pause to be still, to breathe deeply and to recenter our scattered senses upon the presence of God. We take time to remember the words from Matthew chapter 5 verses 3 to 5. God blesses those people who depend only on him. They belong to the kingdom of heaven. God blesses those who grieve. They will find comfort. God blesses those who are humble. The earth will belong to them. Loving God, we thank you that you are a good, caring and faithful God. We know we can depend on you and that you are with us always. We thank you that you have paid the debt of our sin so that we can be reunited with you and look forward with anticipation to the day we will meet you face to face. We come to you with gratitude that the gifts of salvation you have given us that are not those that we could earn or lose but that are a gift from you, freely given, outrageously generous, are made real through the sacrifice of our Saviour, Jesus. Faithful Saviour, we thank you now that you modelled a good and holy life for us in all grace and humility. We acknowledge that we run this race in your strength, not our own, and we give thanks that you sustain us. We thank you for the kingdom paradigm of humility and service where the first is last and the last is first and ask that you would lead us in this way. Open our eyes to see how we can honour you by serving others. May we be ever mindful that we have been so blessed and so should bless others out of that which you have given us. When we seek our own good and gain above others, we ask that you would speak clearly and draw us back onto the right paths, Lord. May we see those in need, the hurting, the lost, the lonely, and be moved with compassion not to walk on by, but to be obedient when you show us how we can help and support those whose paths you make intersect with ours. We ask that through all we do, your love and light would shine and that you would be glorified. Dear God, today is the day that we celebrate mothers and we are thankful for each and every mother today. Mothering is a gift from God, not just in having a child, but in the care, encouragement, love and provision that comes from a mother. For each of us that have a mum still with us, who loves and cares for us, we thank you God and ask that you would bless them. For those who have sadly lost their mum, we ask that today you would be their comfort and strength. We thank you for the memories made and rejoice in the gifts that they gave us of life and love. For those who are estranged from their mum, we pray for peace and comfort, Lord. You see all and you know the hurts and the pain of the past and you can work in and through those things to bring about good for all. We pray that where possible, forgiveness and reconciliation might come, but where it isn't, that there would be healing of the heart and spirit. For the single mums, we give thanks for their strength and courage to carry on each day. For those who want to be mums, but haven't yet realised the dream, we pray that you would be with them, hold them in your loving embrace, and continue to speak hope into their lives. For mums who have lost their children, we join them in mourning just as you do and ask that you would surround them with your love and grace, reminding them that they are no less a mum. Bring them healing in their hearts and show them they are not alone. For all those who have fostered or adopted, we give great thanks as they demonstrate so faithfully the gift of extravagant love and sacrifice to love those children in their care in all the complexities that come with this. We ask you for wisdom for them, strength, grace and blessings. And for all those that have spiritual children, those who we look to for wisdom, companionship, support, encouragement and prayer, we thank you that in you we are family 
and through our, though they are not our mum by blood, we are one in the family of Christ. We pause now to bring to you the names of all those for whom today is a difficult day, and we pray for them each individually now. Dear Father, we thank you that you are willing and able to work in and through our prayers. We thank you for the privilege of being able to sit in your presence today. And I pray that you will be with each of us in all we do, now and in the week to come. Amen. Speak, oh Lord, as we come to you. your holy word. Take your truth, plant it deep in us, shape and fashion us in your likeness, that the light of Christ might be seen. today is from Mark chapter 10 starting at verse 35 the request of James and John then James and John the sons of Zebedee came to him teacher they said we want you to do for us whatever we ask what do you want me to do for you he asked they replied let one of us sit at your right and the other at your left in your glory. You don't know what you're asking, Jesus said. Can you drink the cup I drink or be baptised with the baptism I am baptised with? We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, 
You will drink the cup I drink and be baptised with the baptism I am baptised with. But to sit at my right or left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared. When the ten heard about this, they became indignant with James and John. Jesus called them together and said, You know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Well, thank you, Dawn, for reading our Bible passage for today. And thank you so much to Leanne for leading our prayers so helpfully this morning. And as I have alluded to earlier, we have finished our Bible series, Experience a Better Story, from our friends at the Bible Society. And following your feedback, it has proven really popular. So I will continue to plug Andrew Ollerton's book as an excellent resource to explore the Bible as a whole recognising the one big story. And we hope that later on in the year, we will be uh, able to run a midweek session called The Bible Course, which is a similar series, but with more opportunity for discussion, a bit like a home group study. Anyway, back to this morning, and we are looking at Mark's Gospel, Mark chapter 10, and we shall continue this new mini-series in Mark's Gospel for the next few weeks in the run-up to Easter. And we have called this mini-series On the Way. Uh, That's because that is where we find Jesus and his disciples in Mark chapter 10, on the way, on the way to Jerusalem, where Jesus shall be betrayed, crucified, but on the third day will rise again. And today's reflection is called Me on the Right and You on the Left. Now, just to be clear, this is not a reference to how you vote, whether you vote Labour or whether you vote Conservative. This is a reference to James and John's request. Let one of us sit at your right and the other at your left in your glory. So let's paint the picture of where we are at in Mark chapter 10. Jesus is on the road with his disciples and the disciples are squabbling amongst themselves Who is the best disciple? Who is the greatest? This is all from chapter 9, but continues in our passage today. And just to be clear, Jesus has told the disciples three times by now that he is going to die in Jerusalem. Jesus has predicted his death and resurrection three times. And in chapter 9, we read that James, John and Peter, who are kind of the inner circle of Jesus' disciples, they've witnessed Jesus' transfiguration. They have seen Jesus speaking with Elijah and Moses. And they recognise that Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is King. And yet, they continue to squabble for power in the new kingdom. They don't seem to have grasped what Jesus has been telling them about his death, resurrection and the new kingdom to come, about God's kingdom. 
And also to put some context into this, uh, at this time in the Bible, they were living under occupation, occupation by the Romans. And the Romans were not popular with these guys. After all, what have the Romans ever done for us? And I think the disciples, especially James, John and Peter, thought that Jesus, as the Messiah, he was going to rock up to Jerusalem, overthrow the Romans and rule as king. And as the inner circle, they were jockeying for power and a role in the new kingdom. They wanted to be at the top table, sat on the left and right side of the king. As the New Living Translation Bible puts it, when you sit on your glorious throne, we want to sit in places of honour next to you, one on your right and the other on your left. And so, yet again, the disciples have got it wrong. James and John, they have misunderstood understood. They were human, so be encouraged. They get it wrong and sometimes so do we. You know, to be a disciple of Jesus, it's not about knowing everything and getting it right all the time. For us today, it's not about knowing the Bible inside out. It's not about understanding everything in the Bible. You know, listening, reading and learning from scripture is really important. But being a disciple of Jesus, it is about recognising Jesus as your Lord. Recognising Jesus as your King, Jesus as your Saviour. It is about heart knowledge, not head knowledge. It's about having a relationship with Jesus, just as the disciples did in this passage. And in this passage, Jesus continues to explain what else it means to be a disciple. He says, you know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Wow. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. You know, in my mind, this passage explains beautifully what it means for us to be a disciple of Jesus. And I can assure you, it's not about power and greatness. Firstly, this passage tells us that there is a relationship, recognising Jesus is King and being able to go to him in prayer with requests, even if they are wrong, just as James and John did. Then, recognising Jesus has authority over our lives. And to be a disciple is recognising that authority and submitting to that authority in repentance and obedience. Obedience to God. Jesus says, you will drink the cup I drink and be baptised with the baptism I am baptised with. You know, and then even Jesus recognises God's authority but to sit at my right or left is not for me to grant. 
These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared. Even Jesus is obedient to the Father. And in that obedience to God, there is sacrifice. Jesus gave his life as a ransom for many. That is for me and for you. Jesus died the most cruel death on the cross because of our sin, to give his life as a ransom for us. The ultimate act of sacrifice and service, serving others. To follow Jesus costs everything. Someone recently said to me, if something costs nothing, it will do nothing. But if something costs everything, then it will change everything. And that is what Jesus did, changed everything through his life, through his death and through his resurrection, everything has changed. He has turned the world upside down. The first shall be last and the last shall be first. Jesus, the servant king who did not come to be served, but to serve because he loves us. So today, I hope and pray that this passage shall serve as a reminder to us all of what it means to be a disciple of Jesus and to follow his example. To be a disciple, it is not about power, greatness, lording it over others or privilege but it is about relationship. It is about prayer, obedience, and sacrifice. That is what we are called to as disciples of Jesus. And no doubt, we are all at different stages of our discipleship journey. Perhaps you need to recognize Jesus as your master your Saviour, and as your Lord and King. Every journey starts with a step, and I pray that today, if that is you, that you take that first step. And for others, perhaps you are wrestling with obedience to God today. Perhaps you're struggling with an addiction, a habit, a relationship, something in your life that you know is not healthy and not what God wants. And so I pray that you can take these things to Jesus in prayer and hand it over and give Jesus all authority and power in your life. Allow him to turn your life upside down because God knows you, he loves you, and he wants the very best for you. And as a church, as we choose our new diaconate this week, I pray that we all recognize that we are all called to serve and not to be served. Where is God calling you to serve him? Who can you share the love of Jesus with this week? How is God calling us to serve him and our community? And finally, my prayer is a prayer of deep gratitude. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve.
others and to give his life as a ransom for many. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. From heaven you came, helpless babe. Entered our world, your glory veiled. Not to be served, but to serve. So as we draw our time to a close, let's share the words of the grace with one another. 
May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen.